say good evening to you tonight. Good to have you out on a Friday night. We appreciate you being with us on our TGIFNS service tonight, man. We just appreciate you being on, taking time to share your time with us on a Friday night. Well, we're coming to you from the WORF studio, man, live here in Okeechobee, Florida. And man, I tell you what, uh, we have had some beautiful weather, had a little bit of chilly weather, but man, I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyhow, welcome to the program tonight. Thank you for being on. We made it to the end of another work week, and I hope and pray, trust that you've had a great week, that God has blessed you. Uh, again, some folks up north getting some snow, and uh, I don't know if you're getting snow. Put it on the screen, let me know if you're getting snow, but we're not getting any snow here. It was 55 this morning here when when we got up, but I tell you what, that, I know you folks up north just, just think we're a bunch of sissies down here, but I'm going to tell you what, you'd have to live in Florida for a while to realize how cold 55 is and the wind's blowing, and uh, man, I tell you what, it'll chill you to the bone, but uh, it's not like that cold snow up north, so if you got any snow, let us know if you've got snow, and, and we'd appreciate that. Won't you go ahead and hit that like button, and uh, let us know you've been on. Give me a thumbs up or a heart right there. I see some of them coming up. And go ahead and like that. And then please go ahead and and share the program out. So uh, we just hope and pray. I'm looking at somebody, Sandra Vail, talking about her daughter. It's in Arkansas. She's cold. Yeah, I'd say she is, Sandra. No doubt about it. That's where Pastor Brooks is. He's in Arkansas. And uh, But anyhow, go ahead and like the program and share it out if you would tonight. And let's see what happens. Kind of like going fishing, man. Let's just throw the throw the throw the the bait out, throw the hook out, and see what happens. Amen. Well, I wanted to wear my shirt again tonight. I love this shirt, my Make America Godly shirt. I just absolutely love that, and uh, because I believe that's what we need to do. And the only way to make America godly is by getting people to turn to Jesus. And we need to get them turned on and tuned in to Jesus. And man, if they do that, they would be well on their way to man being exactly what Jesus wants them to be. Well, let me thank you again, all of our online people, online support. We appreciate you. And we need your prayers and, sh and your support. And we thank you for that. And just pray that uh, you'll continue to be with us and pray for us. And we appreciate you being on. God bless you. Amen. Well, it's that time of the year. Can you realize it's almost going to be Christmas here just in a few weeks? And uh, it's time that we start taking up money for our kids for Christmas. And if you want to give to that, 
uh, we'd be sh we'd love for you to help out on that. If you want to, just make sure that you let us know your donations, put on your check or whatever, uh, earmark that for donation for kids, and we'll know that's for Christmas. But it's that time of the year, and we got to get that rolling, and hopefully we can get the money in and get that finished up real soon. Amen. But, uh, man, it's been a great week, and, and we just thank God for all of his blessings. No matter what you're going through, you got something to praise the Lord for. Amen. So you'll be able to finish this song up and sing it with me. Just thank you, Lord. Amen. Sing it, sing it out loud. If I had a thousand years, I'd live them all, live them all for, for my Lord. Lord. Listen, boy, he's been so good to me. Has he been good to you? He's been good to me. That's the least. That's the least. Woo, put a shout up on that. Times outnumbered. Oh, yes. I have never heard. Sherry, she's saying yes, yes. She can thank the Lord. He's been good to me. He's been good to me, Miss Kim. He's been good to me. All right, all right, all right. Let me give you, let me give you some announcements to kind of get us started out tonight. Don't forget Sunday morning services at 1030 live in the auditorium. And we're also having a baptizing service. We're also on Facebook Live of <clears throat> you don't have a church to attend, we'd love to have you be a part of our group, either in person or online. And then Sunday evening, we'll be having our end time study at six o'clock. And then at 4.30 on Sunday evening, we're going to be gathering for our Thanksgiving meal. And I hope if you're in the area that you can come and be a part of that. I hope all of our people that are here will come and be a part of that. Bring your family, bring your friends, and bring somebody with you. And let's have a good time. And then we'll have our end time study at six o'clock that night. And I would tell you, I try not to hold you long, but you know what, they, you know how that goes. But we'll have our dinner and then we we'll try to get you in and out. But uh, if you can bring somebody with you, man, and, and be a part of it, it's a great time. A great time to invite somebody when the church has got stuff going on and having dinners and, and stuff like that. And we just love to invite people in and to be with us. Uh, during those times, we got our th our Christmas dinner coming up on December the 16th, and we always love to have people invite people, visitors and friends to be with them. So uh, I hope that uh, you will take advantage of that and invite somebody to come out and be with you Thursday, Thursday, <laughs> Sunday for our Thanksgiving dinner. And then don't forget Tuesday morning truce. Boy, I tell you, I told them the other night, I absolutely love that crowd on, on Tuesday morning. We've got about, I don't know, 13 to 20 people that gather, 13 to 18, I don't know how many exactly, that gather on Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock just to know more about the Word of God. And we just finished up our lessons, 10 lessons on Baptist distinctives. If you've never heard of those, you need to get online and, and listen to those. You can go on YouTube on my channel, Mike Worf Ministries, and pick those up, and they're on a playlist, and you can see every one of those the last one I did was on separation of church and state, and boy, you need to hear that. But anyhow, on Tuesday morning, we're going to be starting a brand new study, and that's going to be on spiritual gifts. And man, I'm excited about getting into that. I've been preaching on that, hitting on that, and talking about that. And uh, man, what a blessing. <clears throat> what a blessing that's going to be. So that'll be Tuesday morning. Either you can join us live, <coughs> pardon me or you can join us on Facebook Live, or you can pick it up on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, or on the replay on Facebook. And uh, man, that's gonna be an exciting time. Listen, God's given everybody that's been saved a spiritual gift, and it's up to you to unwrap that and cultivate that and use that for God's glory, amen? And uh, so tune in on Tuesdays. You say, preacher, I don't even know what my gift is. Well. Maybe before this series over, you'll find out. I hope so. Amen. And then don't forget next Wednesday night's our Wednesday night prop night service. We call it the prop night service because if you grew up like I did back in the hills and hollers of West Virginia, 
mom would hang those clothes on an old outside clothesline and take a big a big stick and put it right up in the middle of that clothesline and prop that up in the middle so that it wouldn't drag the ground. And that's what Wednesday night is. It keeps us from dragging the ground spiritually. So don't forget that. And then don't forget that next Thursday is Thanksgiving. Wow. Can you believe that? So please, as we enter into Thanksgiving week, we need to do it every day, but you know, we've got, we've got, a, we've got a time set aside that we especially celebrate Thanksgiving. And I like that. I really, I really like that because we need rem reminded and uh, jogged around every now and then to help us to remember we need to be thankful. But I just want to encourage you to be, to be thankful as we go into this next week. Take a little bit of time every day. The podcast next week will be on Thanksgiving thoughts. And uh, so I hope that you'll, you'll be tuning into that and you'll have something to be thankful for. Amen. Hope you have a great time. If you want to be with family or friends or whoever, and as you celebrate, just take time to be thankful. Amen. And then don't forget to be praying every day at 320 for our church. We've asked people to pray at 320. You say, why would we pray at 320 in the day? Well, it's because of Ephesians 320. Pastor Brooks just put the verse up on the screen. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And we're just asking God to do great things, do big things in our church. We're going to ask for big things, and we're going to ask for God to do that. And I'm asking our people and asking you to join in and help us pray every day. We have our, our clocks set, our alarm set on our phones. And when it, when it goes off, I was out fishing this week and the alarm went off. And I say, it's prayer time. We got to pray. And man, just prayed right there on the water. But I tell you what, you can pray wherever you are. I was in a store today and it went off and say, it's prayer time. Just had, just had to pray as I was in the store. So at 320, set your alarm, and when it goes off, pray, and think about Freedom Baptist Church, 3D Army, and our ministries. Amen. Well, we're excited about the revival we got planned up for February 5th through the 8th. Uh, Evangelist Randy Perry and his wife Mary will be here, and Randy and Mary will be singing, and then Randy will be preaching, and I'm excited about that. I was just texting with him a little bit ago. We got our, got our, our hookup ready, put in today, and thank God for that for his motor home there to there to church. So, uh, man, I'm excited about them being here. It'll be February before we know it. Amen. And then birthdays today. Our grandson, my grandson, my favorite grandson in the whole wide world, Broden is celebrating his fourth spiritual birthday. And what a blessing it is. I'm so proud of him. He, he is a fine, young Christian man and has a heart for the Lord. And I tell you what, it's a great day when he got saved four years ago. And then we went to, they were still in Denver and we went out there and baptized him <coughs> out there in, in Colorado and man had a great time. And now he's here serving with Grampy right here at the church. And man, what a blessing that is. So happy spiritual birthday, Broden. Number four, man, I tell you what, you got a lot of them ahead of you, hopefully. And then prayer request tonight, we want to pray for the hurricane victims, still pray for them. I sent some money out today to to some folks today, and and they're telling me just still how how bad it is over on Sanibel and in the Fort Myers area, and I'm sure in many other areas. And again, thank all of you that gave for that, and we're using that money uh, to help folks out. And then pray for the people of Ukraine as they've had more bombings uh, this past week. They had lost power there where Nina is with the the. Uh, uh, celebration uh, building resources that she has and the school got a school going there got a, a kitchen going there got a place for rep refugees going there got people having church service there they've got you know they've been praying for a preacher and I, I think maybe they got one but uh, man just God is using her but pray for the people of Ukraine amen and pray for Jerry and Lydia Taylor uh, tonight. They're traveling, so we want to pray for them. They're coming out of the North Country. As Jerry told me today, they just, they just, was that today? Or may, yesterday, maybe. said so they're just, they're just a little, little ways from the Canadian border up there, man. That's too far north for me, man. Put me down in the south, but uh, pray they have a good safe trip and a good time as they go back home to celebrate Thanksgiving this weekend with Miss Lydia's family. Pray for them. Miss Evelyn Tice, our cook, 
is leaving tomorrow. She's traveling tomorrow, and she's going up to be with her son, Darwin, up in uh, Kentucky. She'll freeze to death up there, so she won't stay long. She'll be back uh, soon because she'll freeze to death up there. But pray that she has a good trip. And then I believe her sister's I missed all of it, the uh, first lady you put on the screen, but it went by and I didn't get it, but she just sent a request. And her sister's son or grandson, I believe is what that said, is in the hospital. But pray for uh, Evelyn's sister's son or grandson. God knows all about it. And then Miss Rosemary Taylor, pray for her. She's battling throat cancer and, uh, man, getting everything fixed up with her. I see Tanya just topped on. You got your mother-in-law coming to town. That means be good. Be good, because she'll be keeping an eye on you and Darwin. And tell Jamie Lynn, my girl on Jamie Lynn, I love her. So uh, Miss Evelyn will be up there. Then pray for Rosemary and Don. Don's still in rehab after his strokes and everything. But Don and Rosemary, that they need a miracle in their life. And they pray for Beth Jenkins, that God will bless her. She's got some health things going on. And just pray for Beth and Daniel and their family. And then Sherry Snyder, girl, let me let me, let me blow you a kiss. It's so good to see you back on live with us tonight after Larry just passing away. And, and God bless your heart. We're praying for you that God will bless you and help you and keep you and strengthen you. And I know he will. But uh, also her granddaughter had her tonsils taken out today. And I believe that turned out real good. So we thank God for that. But she's had several saved, a son and maybe a I don't know if it was a grandson or a son, but several saved from Larry's passing and, and what a blessing that was. And then Dewana Spry has her granddaughter Bella's having trouble with her eyes and she's 13 years old and going to be getting that checked out and worked on. Then baby McCoy that had the brain surgery continue to be with, with baby McCoy. Pastor Randy Skeens is some better, it sounds like, from the post that I, I read today. So pray for Randy and Sharon and their family. Pastor Donnie is recovering from surgery. Be with, pray for him and Anetta. Uh, Pastor Paul Payne, his surgery was on the 10th and he's recovering. Pray for Pastor Paul and Miss Judy. And that's where Pastor Brooks and Miss Diane, they're out there in Arkansas helping Pastor Paul in the church. And Pastor Paul will be preaching again this Sunday and pray for that. And Brother Robbie Baker is going to be coming over from Missouri to pray. Well, I just got a thing popped up on my screen. Put a shout on a dry Baptist. 79 degrees in Okeechobee tomorrow. I tell you what, whoo, summertime is back. So pray for Pastor Brooks and Miss Diana's there out there preaching. And well, Diane's not preaching. Well, she's probably preaching to Pastor Brooks, but I don't know if he's listening or not, but pray for them. And then, and then uh, Pastor Brooks' brother Edward passed away this week. And we'll pray for uh, the Brooks family and pray that God will bless Edward, he got saved when Pastor Brooks had his father's funeral several years ago. And we just pray, pray for, pray for them. Roxanne's mom, uh, 95 years old, wow, has COVID. So we want to pray for her. And uh, man, just pray that uh, God will take care of her, 95 years old. Pray for Pastor Sebi uh, that is doing his mission work in Kentucky and preaching and working and man, just working and working. I'm working on a building. I'm trying to think how that song. I can't get the tune in my mind. That's, what's that old song? Working. I'm working on a building. But uh, pray for Pastor Sebi and he and Pastor Steve and their families. Wives are going to be here for the revival. So we're excited about that. Pray for Pastor Steve Boggs, man, doing a great job, a good work for us, for the Lord and for us there with FBCC in Calhoun County, West Virginia. And man, he's just visiting about everybody in the county and doesn't matter if they go to church with him or whatever, if they need a visit, need led to the Lord, Pastor Steve is the guy to call. So thank you, Pastor Steve, for all you're doing, buddy. God bless you. And uh, also Pastor Steve's, Steve's brother, Danny, will be going for more chemo in three weeks. So pray for Danny, that uh, that'll be uh, taken care of. Pray for Pastor Matt Roberts, my new buddy over in Arcadia, pastor of the Brownsville Baptist Church. Boy, I found a buddy. He and I were on the phone talking this week. And I found a buddy, a like-minded buddy, and those are hard to find. So pray for ba Pastor Matt and their family and their church over there in Arcadia. Uh, Kim Carreri, my buddy, our classmate, has cancer of the stomach, liver, lungs, and pancreas. And boy, I tell you, he needs a miracle in his life. And and just pray for just pray for uh, Kim that God will bless him and help him. And then Miss Nancy Whit is on tonight. 
and uh, she's got cancer in the eye and it's going to have to have surgery on that. So we pray that God will help Miss Nancy. Then uh, Eddie Walker's son, Edward Walker Jr., has cancer of the bladder and he's 40 years old. Why wow, I pray for young Mr. Edward Walker Jr., 40 years old. I believe he's up in Ohio. And then Colt Peterman, the young baby that's 22 months old that has cancer, pray for that baby and their family. And Michelle's on tonight, Michelle Christian. Boy, I tell you what, we just, we just love Miss Michelle. And she's been sick. She's been through surgery. She's been through Hurricane Ian. And boy, she's right on the program with us. And I thank God for that. And just pray that God will bless Michelle and her family and help them just to have a good recovery from all this. Evelyn Tice put on her, Bill Monroe singing, working on a building for my Lord. I believe that might be it. Then Martin Bowling put on uh, that he's he's got, it's a friend of uh, Bill Shirley Marr, and he's recovering from open heart surgery and is in rehab. Micah Lopez, that's Kathy, Kathy Lopez's son. Micah Mann, are you on tonight, buddy? Uh, we love Micah Mann, and he's having some more blood work done, and the pressure in his eyes are up. And just pray that God will take care of that. That's my buddy, Micah Mann. Hey, Kathy Thomas is watching. To send a little loving to my buddy, Micah Mann. So pray for Micah Mann. And then remember all those on Facebook and the website that we put out, the First Lady puts out. Man, we got a, an exhaustive list of people on there. Ralph and Rita are on tonight. We always want to think about Rita and, and Ralph down there at the, at the camp, church camp, taking care of that. Miss Rita not doing good. So pray for you guys that God will bless you and uh, just continue to hang on, man. Amen. So let's pray for our country. Man, I, you know, I started, to, I thought about R&R &R tonight, but if I got started, that's all I do because there's so much craziness going on in the world that, you know what, it's pathetic. But uh, we just need to pray for our country. We need to make America godly again. As I, as I say, man, listen, don't worry. Don't worry about saving the Titanic. Worry about saving the souls that were on the Titanic. That's what that preacher did, man. Listen, they couldn't save the ship. And I don't know if America can be saved or not. The only hope it has is that we make America godly again. So pray for us that we'll be able to do our part. Pray for you that you'll do your part. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Dear Lord, we're thankful tonight for your blessings. And Lord, another beautiful Friday evening that you blessed us to be on the program, to be able to fellowship uh, with these people. And Lord, I know people say it's, uh, you can't fellowship on the internet, but it's a blessing to me to see them on, to see their comments and, and them as they make comments to me and to each other. And Lord, I get to talk to them. Lord, what a, what a, to me, it's a blessed time of fellowship. And Lord, I pray that you bless each one that's on tonight. Those that will be watching later. God, that uh, you would bless and help them. Lord, everybody's either in a storm coming out of a storm or getting ready to go into a storm. And Lord, I pray that you help us tonight, Lord, just to continue to hold on to you, to trust in you, knowing that there is a better day coming. And Lord, we pray for our church as we've been praying every day at 320. God, that you will provide the very, very things that we need, the resources, the people, the power, Lord, the preaching, the praising, all those things, the purpose, Lord, the pattern, the purity, Lord, all the things that we need to be the church that you would want us to be. And Lord, I pray you bless our people. Thank you for them. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, that we might see people saved and come to know you before it's too late. Lord, bless all these names that we've been called out tonight, people that are so sick and got so many needs. Lord, I pray for them, the hurricane victims, Ukraine, America, our leaders, Lord, our president, our Congress, uh, those that have been elected, those that are still trying to figure out if they've been elected, Lord, uh, with, uh, what a mess that's been. And Lord, just pray that you help us, Lord, to make America godly. Help us to get turned in, into Jesus and, and turned on to Jesus and tuned into Jesus. And Lord, what a blessing that would be in, in our lives. And Lord, help us to share Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you bless the service tonight. Maybe somebody's on it's unsaved or backslidden not what they ought to be. Maybe they need to make a decision. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to them even as we go out on Facebook Live tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray, pray, pray another song. I was, what did I have up here just a minute there? Uh, well, we, hey, Stephanie, Miss Steph Lauren and 
uh, Joni Lawson are on tonight, Michelle's sisters. I tell you, Michelle's getting the whole crew on. And uh, man, I appreciate that, Michelle. So to your other sisters, God bless you. Thank you. Man, what a blessing it is to have y'all on with us tonight. Let me see what I want what I wanted to play here tonight. I had one pulled up here and I thought, man, I ought to just I ought to just play that one right there tonight. And I don't know don't know where it went to, but oh, I love this one right here. Can I play this one tonight just for me? See if you like it. When I came into this world, I just can't recall. I just can't recall. I don't remember anything about my birth at all. But on my knees, one night in prayer, I never knew you be greater. Can you relate to that? Whoa, that put a shout on. It made no difference. Some name was written down. Never made the evening news. Woo! I'm getting a, I'm getting a TNT right there. A little tug on that. Listen, I know people say, well, I can't remember the day. I can't remember what time it was. I'm going to tell you what. If you don't know there was something that happened to you, man, you need to go back and check that salvation experience. Because I'm going to tell you what, even if you can't remember the day or whatever, you ought to know when something happened to you. And I tell you what, I ain't never got over that. And I hope I never get over that. Amen. I don't ever want to get over that, man. I want to always remember Man, what Jesus did for me. Amen. Well, let's play one more song tonight, and then we're going to get ready to get into a little message. Here, let's play this one right here from old Chuck, see how that sounds tonight. <laughs> the truth in it. There are many, many things, things I need to do and say. Anything you need to take care of tonight. And as I've often wondered if the road is called have I done enough, have I done enough? for Jesus today? My appointed time has come. I can't bear steel or bottle. One more tomorrow, so I better get ready for Jesus today. No, I can't bear steel. 
Sebi on there, boy, I tell you, well, he tore this place up here a few weeks ago, and I mean, for a good way, for the Lord, and man, I tell you, our people absolutely fell in love with Sebi, and we can't wait to see him back down. I know Randy's been trying to fish. He he sent me a text this week to the wrong Mike, and, and uh, we got to talking around, asking if he liked fish, and man, they were going fishing. He said, man, my wife and I both love fish. I said, we plan on having a big fish fry to kick that revival off, so man, we're looking forward to that, but uh, Appreciate that. Uh, Pastor Brooks, before I get started, got your Bible open up to Isaiah 58, verse number one and that, but let me talk to Pastor Brooks for a minute. It, are you sitting there around with Pastor Paul and Miss Judy tonight? Are you all listening? You and Miss Diane? I just I'm, I just don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just thinking about that. Out there in that cold weather, and be like the old fireside chats, man, with FDR and all of you sitting around listening to the old time preacher man. But if you are, God bless you. Yep, all of you sitting there listening. So, wow. Love you. Well, you know what time it is. Here we go. Sound the alarm. Man, time to sound the alarm. Well, that's going to take me around to my verse tonight in Isaiah 58.1. I jotted some things down today. Uh, I thought, man, I, I ought to just talk about that tonight. So let me see how that works out. But Isaiah 58, verse number one. Listen to what it said says, cry aloud. Boy, I tell you what, I like that. Somebody the other day, we we're talking in the class, the Tuesday morning truce, and we we're talking about preaching and the role of the pastor and, and all those things. And I said, you know, the preaching is just yelling loud, but that's not true. But you, you preach for decisions, you challenge people and bring them to a decision for the Lord in their spiritual life. You teach to impart knowledge, but Preaching is a lot, a lot of times crying aloud, and I, I can do that. I might not be very good at the other part, but I'm, I can get pretty loud. <clears throat> Anyhow, Isaiah 58 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. 
and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Listen to that verse again. Man, there's a lot of preaching in that. Cry loud. Man, listen, if the house was on fire, listen, if you went by a house tonight and it was on fire, listen, you wouldn't go by and just go, your house is on fire. You need to get out. You'd be screaming and yelling, jumping up and down, man, telling them, hey, get out, get out. If the bridge was out, you'd be flagging and waving people saying, don't go, don't go. The bridge is out, but people are going out into eternity, lost in, into devil's hell for all eternity without Jesus. And we just... We don't want to get too excited about that. Man, listen, we need to cry aloud and spare not. Man, just don't waste anything. Isaiah 58, verse 1, Carmi. Isaiah 58, verse 1. I said, she said, what chapters? I'll answer that. I see that right on the screen. Cry aloud, spare not. Man, listen, what, 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 we shouldn't spare our energy. We, we shouldn't spare expenses. We shouldn't spare anything that whatever it takes to get the gospel out. Amen. I mean, listen, we cry loud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Man, listen, I, listen, I know, I know there are a lot of preachers in the world that they can preach with a soft voice, but I can't do it. God has gifted me with a big old loud mouth. And, and you know what? I just want to lift up my voice like a trumpet. I want to sound it out and tell people, hey, I'm, be I'm beginning to feel a little touch and tug right now. And thank God for the old time preachers that still get up and preach the word of God and look people in the eye and they cry loud. They're not afraid to raise their voice. They're not afraid to raise the roof. They're not afraid to raise the shingles. They're not afraid to rattle the windows. They're not afraid to raise their voice. Man, I'm going to tell you what, we need to cry aloud. As we look and think about America being godly, I don't know if it will ever be, but I'm going to tell you what we can do. We can pull people out of the fire one by one and tell people and let them know you need Jesus in your life and spare not people say well you know I don't I don't have time to get involved in all that man you how can you how can you not you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Jesus one of these days if you're saved not for salvation but for your service and give an account of the way you've lived for Jesus have you used your gift have you done anything for Jesus? So many people have been saved and they've never done anything for Jesus. They've never, they, they don't know what their gift is. It's never been unwrapped. They've never opened it up. It's sitting in their heart and it's still just wrapped up and man, it's doing absolutely nothing. I want to, I feel a little preaching coming on. Cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and do what? Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Sins. Listen, we got people that they want to preach, but they don't want to tell anybody about sin. They don't want to call sin, sin. They don't want to call it what the Bible says. They want to modernize it. They want to liberalize it. They want to progress it. They want to change the definition and change the meaning. Then we've got people that are so confused today. They're confused about their morals. They're confused about their gender. They're confused about sex. You know why? Because nobody is lifting up their voice and preaching that sin is sin. Well, I still believe we need to do it. You say people don't like to be called out on their sin. No, they don't. But you know what? We still need to do it. Amen? Amen. God's called us. God has called, listen, especially if you're a preacher, man, God has called you to lift up your voice and cry aloud and spare not and lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Get up and tippy toe around. Go to a ball game and hoot and get in a ball game and hoot and holler till you can't speak the next day. Go out here and talk about something, man. Listen, but you can't get excited about Jesus. How in the world can you not get excited about Jesus? I don't know about you, the dearest friend I ever had. I have never gotten over that day. I don't remember a thing about that first birth I had, but I'm going to tell you what, on that second one, it's made a difference in my life. And you know what? I don't ever want to get over it. I don't ever want to get I think we got too many people that have gotten over it. I think that's one of the problems today that we've gotten too many people that have gotten over it. 
How can you get over being saved? How can you get over being resurrected from death unto life? Man, Jesus saved us. We were dead. The Bible says we were dead in trespasses and in sin. And we've got all these liberal modern preachers that they don't want to offend anybody. They're afraid their offerings will go down. They're afraid people will hit the doors and not come back. Hey, honey, go ahead. Keep your money. Take and vote with your feet. Vote with your seat. Do what you got to do. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to call sin out. I'm going to call sin what it is. I'm not going to side on the side of the devil and side with these liberals and these modern and these, these preachers. I, I don't even know how you can call them preachers. I'm going I'm to preach the word of God. Amen. Amen. So let me just give you a couple things tonight. I, I, I got carried away on that. Amen. But I, let me give you a couple things what we need to sound the alarm. I'm preaching on sound the alarm. We need to sound the alarm to the saints. Those of us that are saved, we're on here tonight. That's what I'm doing. You say, well, what, what, what do you mean? If we need to sound out the alarm. We need to sound the alarm to the saints of God. You say, well, what do you need to tell? I'm going to tell them they need to wake up. Too many are asleep. Too many have gone to sleep at their post. Too many have gone AWOL. Too many are not doing anything for Jesus. You need to wake up. No, you need to wake up. You need to read up. You need to get in that Bible and read that Bible every day. You need a daily devotion every day. You need something every day to tie you into Jesus. And you need to read every day. You need to not only wake up, you need to read up. And then you need to pray up. You say, I don't want to pray for. I've got about 12 things that start with P's that are telling you how to pray for our church. And I'm going to tell you what, man, we need to be prayed up. Man, listen, we need to pray. There's a couple of you realize we're coming down near the end. We're coming down near the end of time. We're coming down near the end of the church age. We're coming down to the close closeness of the rapture of the church can happen at any moment. Moment, And we need to be prayed up. We need to be read up. We need to wake up. And we also need to be ready to go up. Man, you're not going to have time to change when you hear that trumpet sound and Jesus comes back to take us out of here. You're not going to have time to to change. So you need to be ready. You need to be rapture ready today. So we need to sound the alarm for the saints. They need to stand up. They need to speak up. Man, we got too many, we got too many silent Christians today. People want to be a silent saint. We don't need silent saints. We need vocal saints. We need loud saints. We need people that are not afraid to lift up their voice like a trumpet. We need to stand up. We need to speak up. We need to light up. Jesus said, you're the light of the world, man. Listen, there are a lot of people whose lights are mighty dim tonight. I mean, their lights are mighty dim. Jesus is, Jesus saved you and he lit you up, man. You're like a candle in a dark and dreary land after the world's a dark place. It's an evil place. It's getting darker every day. And you need to, you need to light up for Jesus. You say, well, my light's about out. Well, I know where you can get relit. Amen. I know. Listen, get close to the fire. Get close to the spout where the glory comes out. Man, just get in touch with Jesus. Get down and pray and ask Jesus to come back into your heart and light you up and give you a fire and reignite you and get you excited about Jesus Christ. Amen. So we need to alarm the saints to stand up. We need to tell them to speak up. It's no time to sit down and shut up. We need to light up. We also need to shake up. Jesus said, you're not only the light of the world, he said, you're the salt of the earth. Man, we have what the world needs. We have inside of us the Holy Ghost of God. God has given us the Holy Ghost of God, the power of God. We have the word of God. We are lights for Jesus and salt. You know what salt will do? Salt will keep meat from going bad. Now, let me, I say this all the time. After the meat's gone bad, salt, you put all this, you can cover, you can take roadkill and cover it with salt. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna help it after it goes bad, after it spoils. People say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in that old dead church. I'm gonna hope and I'll get out, get them to move and, and get out of that. Listen, when a church has died, your best thing you can do is move on. I'm gonna tell you what, it's, it's gonna take a miracle of God to get that thing turned around, man, and get it back on fire for Jesus. And most people don't want to be on fire for Jesus. So you need to, you need to shake that salt, man. You need to, you need to keep the world from getting worse, from getting more rotten, from decaying more. That's what salt does. And we need to shake that on people. We need to shine the light on people. 
and we need to shake the salt on them of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then we need to break up. The Bible says in Hosea 10, 12, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord. You know, there's some things, I, I bet you the truth be you known, we need to have our hearts broken up tonight. When's the last time you got excited about about somebody that was lost? When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? When was the last time you got down on your knees and you prayed for somebody? I bet every one of you tonight, everybody on here has got loved ones that are going to die and go to hell. They're, they're, or they're either away from the Lord. And you know what? You need to be the one that would pray for them and witness to them. And you need to break up, break up the fallow ground. That fallow ground is ground that's been trampled on, ground that hadn't been harvested, ground that hadn't been plowed, and it's gotten hard and if you're going to sow seed into it, you've got to have the word of God. You've got to break it up where that the seed can get down in the ground. And you know what? We need to get our hearts broken up. So we need to break up. I could use another way to break up. There's some things we need to break up with. How you like that? We need to not only break up our hearts. There's some things we need to break up with. There are too many... Wow, I could get on that and preach for... I'm looking at the clock right now. Time's running out. But you know what? Hey, we need to break up. Yeah, there's some Christians. I bet you there's some things. I bet you if the truth be known, there's some things that you need to break up with. I bet you there's some things in your life that you need to break up with. I bet you there's some activities. I bet you there's some things that you have attached yourself to that you need to break up with. You need to break up from those things. You need to break away from them. The Bible says, come out from among the world. Come out from the unclean and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Listen, you've lost your power. You've lost your witness. You've lost your testimony. You've lost your light. You've lost your, your, your salt. You've lost your joy. You've lost your contentment. You've lost everything because you've let the devil take it away because you have attached yourself to too many things of the world. And it's a distraction. It's a distraction. You're right, Major. We need, we need, we need the Holy Ghost to jackhammer our hearts. That's a good, that's a good simple sermon right there. We need to break up some things. Our, our hearts, you know, Christians have sometimes the hardest hearts in the world. Wow. Wow. We have such hard hearts toward people and toward the things of the Lord. And we're supposed to be saved. Now, isn't that sad? I, I just don't know if people are saved or not. I really, I would question my, I would check my salvation experience. I'm going to tell you, there's some things you need to break up with. I can guarantee, I can guarantee the people I'm talking to now, I bet every one of you got something. You said, well, I don't know, preacher, if it's a sin or not. Well, the Bible said, listen, not, listen, not only are there, there, there sins that we need to get rid of, there's weights that hold us down. There are hindrances that we need to get rid of, and we need to get them in our hearts and in our life. And man, when you think about that, man, I mean, man, listen, that's what we need to do, amen? When you think about that, we need to get, get as Earl Henry said, we need to get shed of some things. We need to get shed of some things. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. Listen, we need to break up some things. We need to get away from some things, some worldly things. The Bible says, man, listen, the love of the world is enmity with God. And we need to break up with some things. Amen. Number two, we not only need to sound the alarm for the saints, we need to sound the alarm for the sinners. They need to be warned. Hey, Sebby, you understand? You had your, 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 your revival this week. I mean, this week, this summer. They're at the Eagle Ranch Ministries on that. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, Warn them that are unruly. Man, listen, we need to warn people that they need to get saved. My series kicked on over. She's trying to she's trying to copy down everything I, everything I'm saying. I'm gonna have to kick her off for a minute. She's she's trying to follow find that on on the internet. I don't think she can find that on the internet. We need to warn them. You say, how do we need to warn them? We need to warn unsaved people. They need to get saved. We need to tell people, man, listen, you know, you, they need to know you you're never gonna get saved till you get lost. All this modern liberal preaching, it doesn't tell people they're lost. You got to get lost before you get saved. We need to warn them that time is running out. Man, listen, well, I just played that song from Chuck. Time is swiftly passing by. 
The Bible says your life is like a vapor. It's swiftly passing by. Time is running out. Man, listen, I'm old, I'm uh, years old and getting older every day. And I'm going to tell you what, it slipped up on me. I'm going to tell you what, old age slipped up on me. It crept up on me. It snuck up on me. I think it attacked me as somebody said attacked it. Attacked me in my sleep and just got on me. But that's what happens, man. Listen, time is running out. You'll be old, you'll be dead, you'll be in eternity before you know it. And we need to warn them that time is running out. They ain't going to live forever. They put their name on streets and on their houses and on their businesses and on this and on that. And listen, you're going to die and leave this world. And then we need to warn them that they'll die. The Bible says the point unto men wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Man, listen, we need to warn people they're going to die. They're not going to live on. They're going to live on in eternity. If they're saved, they're going to live with Jesus in heaven. If, if they die lost, they're going to die and go to hell and be in eternity in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. We need to tell them they're going to die. We need to warn them about being left behind. Who and how in the world could you have a loved one and think about the rapture of the church? It could happen today, tonight, in the morning. It could happen before we get off the program. Thank God. Just pray that it does. Pray that he comes right now. I'd be ready to go. You say, well, my loved ones aren't ready to go. Exactly. That's why you need to be warning them. You don't want anybody to be left behind and go through the seven-year tribulation and hell on earth when the devil is in charge, I mean, think what he's doing right now. He's not even, hey, listen, think what's going to happen when he's in total control. Think what's going to happen when God lets him reign for seven years. Think what's going to happen with him and the Antichrist and the false prophet. Think about that. And then think about the wrath of God being poured out on an unsaved, ungodly, unrighteous world during those seven years. Man, you don't want anybody to be left behind and go through that. You need to warn people they need to be saved. You need to warn them that judgment's coming. People say, well, I'm going to live like I want to live. You, hey, listen, honey, God will let you live any way you want to live. You'll live any way you want to live. But know this, that you'll stand in judgment for it. You will give an account to Almighty God. Amen. Judgment is coming. We don't hear much preaching about judgment anymore. Nobody wants to talk about judgment. Judgment is coming. When you tell people, you're going to stand, every unsaved person is going to stand before the great white throne judgment of Almighty God. And the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. We need to warn them about hell, about eternity, about the lake of fire. We need to warn them. They need to be saved. They've been blinded by Satan. They've been deceived by, by Satan. Man, we need to warn the unsaved. Not only do we need to warn the saints and sound the alarm for the saints, we need to sound the alarm for the sinners. We also need to sound the alarm on the slippery ones. You say, what are, what are the slippery ones? Those are the ones that slipped away from Jesus. <laughs> That's what the, some of them slicker in a minute. Some of them slicker and snot on a doorknob. I mean, I'm just telling you, man, listen, this is slippery, man. Listen, they just, they just slipped away. They've slipped. They've let the cares of the world come in and rob them of their joy and rob them of their peace and rob them of their blessings. And many of them don't even know if they've ever been saved. They're so far away from the God, from God. The Bible said in Hebrews 2, verse number one, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time, we should let them slip. Let me let me say it to you again. Hebrews chapter two, verse number one. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Listen, they've slipped away from Jesus. They backslid and they've slipped away from the word of God. They've slipped away from their prayer life. They've slipped away from their praise life. They've slipped away from witnessing for Jesus. They've slipped away from church attendance. They've slipped away and they've allowed sinful activities and lifestyles to slip right back into them. They've slipped away to the hall pen. They've slipped away into the far country. They're down in the land of Moab. They've slipped away down into Moab. Man, listen, we need to warn the slippery ones. And sound the alarm for the slippery ones. Is that a word, slippery? If it's not, I made it one. For the slippery ones to come back come back to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. Amen? And then I want to close with this. Not only do I need to sound the alarm on the, to the, on the saints and sound the alarm on the sinners and sound the alarm on the slippery ones, we need to sound the alarm on Satan. Man, listen, we need to expose Satan. We need to expose Satan for what he is and who he is. He's not your friend. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you. He lies to you. You see the first lady's devotion she put on today. You ought to go back. You ought to go back and read this as soon as you get off the program tonight. Look her up on Facebook and read that devotion she had on there today. 
Man, Satan lies to you. He's the father of lies. He lie. Listen, you know, I thought about it. I started to preach on that tonight. I thought I'm just going to preach on that. Satan lies to you when you're unsaved. He tells you you can't get saved. You're not good enough to get saved. You've, you've gone too far to get saved. You've committed too many sins. You can't come back. You, you've done this. You've done that. God doesn't love you. And then you get saved. And then he tells you lies. You didn't get saved. You can't stay saved. You can't make it. You're going to fall by the wayside. You're never going to make it. He lies. Man, lies. We need to expose Satan. We don't need to expose him. We need to explain Satan. I think the people ain't saying some somebody out here in a red, red suit with a pitch pitchfork and pointed ears and a long pointed tail and running up down the road with a, it looks red as red as a beat and and uh, they're looking for him. No, no, that's not what Satan looks like. He doesn't look like that. He looks what he looks he looks like the thing that would attract you. It might be a beautiful woman. It might be a handsome man. It might, might be a it might be a shiny new car. It might be a home. It might be a job. It might be it might be some other activity that that Satan would come by with and man just slip that right in on you. We need to explain Satan. People are ignorant. People are ignorant of Satan's devices. Second Corinthians two eleven says, "Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices." You know what Satan is looking for? He's looking for an advantage. Crack the door, crack the window, open it up a little bit. Look out to see if it's Satan out there, and he'll come right in on you. All hey, listen. The daddy used to say, "Give it." Daddy used to say when I was growing, "Give that boy an inch, he'll take a mile." That's it. That had to be. That had to be originally said about Satan. You give Satan an inch in your life, or just a, just a fuzz, and he'll take everything he can. Lest Satan should get an advantage. You know what? He's got an advantage on a lot of people. He's got, he's got an advantage over unsaved people. They're listening to him. They're believing him. They've been deceived. He's got an advantage over the ones that have slipped away because they're listening to Satan. And if they weren't listening to Satan, they'd come back tonight and get right with Jesus tonight. He's even got an advantage on saints. You say, how can Satan? Because we're, well, apparently saints are listening because they're not, they're, not, they're not praying. They're not preaching. They're not praising. They're not telling people. They're not being what God wants us to be because we're using all these excuses. And we've given Satan an advantage. Well, you listen, you say, well, what's Satan doing, man? Let's, Satan can come by. He's just looking for anything to get an advantage, get his foot in the door, get his toe in the door. Paul said, let's Satan should get an advantage of us for we're not ignorant of his devices. If you're listening to me tonight, you're listening on a device. I thank God we can use it for God's glory. Amen. But there are a lot of devices out there. These devices have been used for a lot of evil, a lot of sinful activity. Man, spread a lot of stuff, man, that shouldn't be spread. The porn industry is a billion dollar industry, no doubt. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. Satan lies to us. He lies to us about the Savior. He lies to us about salvation. He lies to us about the saints. He lies to us about sinners. He lies to us about sin. He just lies and lies and lies. Everything he says is a lie. He deceives us. He tricks us. He accuses us. He'll put a bad thought in your mind. He'll put a bad thought in your mind and then accuse you of it and try and make you feel bad for even thinking about it. He's the accuser of the brethren. Man, he hates us. And we got people that don't even know. We need, to, we, need, we need to sound the alarm on Satan, man, and expose him for who he really is. I think I need to preach on that sometime. It'd be a good sermon, these four points. So we need to sound the alarm on the saints. We need to sound the alarm on the sinners. We need to sound the alarm on the slippery ones. We need to sound the alarm on Satan. Amen? Well, listen, thank you for being on tonight. If you're on tonight and you've never been saved, Never been saved. You want to be saved. I'm, I, listen, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking you genuinely and sincerely. If you've never been saved, don't you want to be saved tonight? You don't want to die and go to hell. You don't want to just keep putting it off. If you want to be saved tonight, ask Jesus in your heart. Believe that he, believe that he died on the old cross of Calvary. Believe that he was buried and rose the third day. Man, believe that he come out of that grave and he's coming back someday. He died for us. He rose for us. He's alive for us today. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray a prayer something like this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. And tonight, the best I know how, I'm asking Jesus to save me and to come into my heart. 
And if you meant that, put your name on the screen. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Maybe you're away from the Lord. Maybe you've been slippery. Won't you come back home tonight? Man, listen, we need all the help we can get on this on this side, on, on the God, on God's side. Help us fight this battle. Help us in this battle that we're in. Get out of the hog pen. Get out of the far country and come back home to Jesus tonight. Would you do it while we play this song tonight? Would you do it? If you do, put your name on the screen. So we just want to pray with you and pray for you and rejoice about that. And man, just pray that God will bless you. Amen. While we, while we sing tonight, would you come? How about it? Do it today. Don't delay. Don't put it off another minute. Don't put it off another second. Don't put it off another day. How about it? You got somebody, maybe you need to share this sermon with somebody. Hey, Steph, thank you. Thank you for being on tonight, girl. In Canaan land. If you got saved, say, I got saved tonight so we can rejoice with you. Let me know that you ask Jesus into your heart. Let me know that you prayed that prayer. Say, yes, I got saved. That's where I belong. You got saved. Let us know. Let us rejoice with you. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. How about it? Did you make a decision? Did you come home tonight? Let us rejoice in that. Share it out. His Holy Spirit feels up in my soul. I don't know if Michelle and Steph are saying they've come home to Jesus tonight or not. Did you get saved? Did you come back to Jesus tonight? Rededicate? Let us know. Boy, if you did, thank God for you. Up this mountain to sing in my song. Michelle, did you rededicate or Steph? That's where I belong. Hey, Steph Lauren dedicated her life to the Lord tonight. That's Michelle's sister. Wow, God bless you, Steph. Hallelujah. Best decision you ever make. Amen. Amen. God bless Stephanie and Michelle. Dedicating her life to the Lord tonight. God bless you, Steph. God bless you, Michelle. Wow, what a night. What a night. Wow. I'm moving up. I'm moving. Wow, Michelle dedicated her life to the Lord tonight. Wow, what a blessing. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow, well, I got to play another song, but I got to talk. I got to talk to Steph and, and Michelle tonight. Thank you for dedicating your life to the Lord tonight. I don't know if you got saved or rededicated, but either way, welcome to the family of God. And we're so glad. We're so glad that you're on with us. And man, you made that decision tonight that God spoke into your heart. And man, ask you ask you to come back home to him tonight and you accepted his call. And man, everybody give a little shout out, man, to Michelle and Steph. They're sisters, man. Michelle is the lady that we got to meet over in Arcadia and just absolutely fell in love with Michelle. What a blessing she's been. Been on the program about every, I think she's been on the program every time we've been on since then and got her sister Steph on tonight. So Throw a little loving out there to Michelle and Steph tonight. Here, hey, for you, for you two girls tonight, the dearest friend I ever had, right here.
Go a little bit longer here on Friday night. Was drifting out in sin. I had no hope. But we're proud of you. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Steph. My soul. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. Dearest friend. Abraham rededicate too. That's Michelle's husband. Wow. Hey. Woo, they're having revival over there. Hey, Sebby. <laughs> Woo, son, they're having revival. I didn't see anything about Abraham. Somebody must have seen it. Abraham may have rededicated and got saved, too. He saved my soul. friend ever had. Abraham rededicated Major. I can't see that. I am sad. church tonight right here tonight Abraham did too what <laughs> I bet to put a shout on a dry Baptist right there that'll make the old time preacher get happy amen amen thank you Abraham I'm gonna tell you what what a blessing what a blessing what a blessing that's Abraham and Michelle and then her sister Steph God bless you. I'm going to have the First Lady staff send a friend request to you so she can get in touch with you. We'll be praying for you all. Man, I'm going to tell you what, man. I'm telling you what. What a blessing, man. What a blessing. I tell you what. We love you, and thank you. Thank you. Kim, that's the Comptons singing that dearest friend I ever had. Well, we've had church tonight. Amen. Let's just say this. Lord, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for people that want to be saved and want to come back to you. And Lord, I thank you for Abraham and Michelle tonight. Lord, what a blessing. And Lord, for Steph tonight. Lord, what a blessing. I pray that you take them and use them, help them to grow in you and be what you'd want them to be, that they might be a witness to their family. Lord, they're already reaching out and telling people and getting them on the program. Lord, they're bringing people in. And Lord, we thank you for that tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen been a great night. Hope you have a great week. End. We'll see you. We'll see you Sunday again. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Abraham. If you need something, let us know. We're here to help you. And man, we just, we just rejoice in what God has done in your life tonight. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.